Hey. Let's get warmed up. So the feet together and the hands on top of the head. Let's go for some hip circles. Relaxing the body around the base. Good. Drawing some all the way around that base in each part of the foot. changing directions. Starting off a small circle, that's fine, that's fine. And two more. Good, stepping up. Hands on the waist, belly drawn to the spine, rolling from the hips. Bringing the chest forward and back. Go ahead, bring the hands to the center of the chest, more challenge. And behind the ears, bring more challenge. Keeping the back straight. Two more. Last one. Very nice, same leg position with the hands on the hips, back straight, chest forward, and then twist and look up. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Narrowing that base in a little bit. Pushing into the ground, keeping the back straight as we sink. Hips coming forward, shoulders back as we drop. And one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, <clears throat> nine, and last one. Good. Opening that base a little wider. Back straight, you can manage straight and parallel with the ground. Twisting and looking past the heel. And then back across, nice and slow, rolling the hips. Twist and stretch, and three, four, five, six, seven, Last one, 10. Good, narrowing that stance. All right, hands on the hips, rolling around that base again. When that roll feels smooth, you can add in that body drop. Last one. <clears throat> Good change of directions, rolling around that base in a more vertical position. And you loosen up, adding in that body drop. Very 
Very nice. Taking a bigger step to the side, pulling the foot up, keep pulling the foot up, side to side. And one. stance down, back straight, leaning slightly forward. Grab the ground with your foot, pulling the foot up as you do. Kick yourself in the butt, foot back down. Try not to list as you move. So nice and centered. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep the body centered. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Last one. Good. Slightly wider stance. Turn to the side. As you turn, draw the belly to the back. Play with this twist. And try to feel it stretching through that inguinal, through that quad as you turn into it. We want to use that stretch ultimately to pull the heel out of the ground. So back to vertical, belly in, twist, feel the stretch. Use the arm draw to further turn the torso, okay? While always maintaining that stretch in the hip. Then use that arm draw and torso turn to draw down the leg. Once you get to the heel, add that little bit of exhalation and back, all right? Find the stretch, draw the stretch, Draw into the leg. Once you touch on heel, exhale and throw. Good, try three more on your own. That side. Keeping the kicking leg straight, trying not to bob the head up or rock the body forward. Very nice. The heel's crooked like a cane. You're hooking and lifting with that straight leg. Good, let's do five more together. And E, R, San, Si, Wu, back to center. Change sides, playing with that feel of stretch as you turn. And then deepening that stretch with the arms as they draw. Feel that pull accessing the ankle, then adding that short, sharp exhalation as the foot raises. Stretch to the ankle, exhale, and lift. Stretch. So everyone's got my head is right here in that top corner of my mat. As I kick, still framed right there. No bobbing, no listing forward. Try a couple of those. Good, Joanna. There you go, pushing into the ground as you draw through the belly to kick. Very nice. Good, the more you press into the ground, the more stable you'll become. Very nice, Craig. So down a little, Craig, stretch each time first. Stretch to kick, there you go. Stretch, pop, stretch, pop. Good, that's it, that's it. Let's do five more together. And Karen, watch me as I twist. See how you can draw a line of force, you can see that draw from torso all the way to ankle. Follow that line of force and then reestablish it. And you can take a second to find that angle again, find that most comfortable line, and then back. Let's go for five. Stretch, E. Stretch, R. Stretch, Sun. S. Last one. Woo. Good. Shake that out. Hands on top of the knees. Let's do. Hands pressing to the side, like you're holding two sides of the wall to stop them from crushing in. One leg back, one leg forward, drawing from the belly. And as you exhale, push into the ground with this leg in front, raise the heel, a couple leg is back. So it's one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10. Good, switch legs. Pressing, still drawing the belly to the back, still feel that stretch in the hip, and deep. R, San, Tsu, Wu, Liu, Qi, Ba, Jiu, last one, Shu. Good. Shaking out the arms for a second, and then back to raising outside crescents. So pulling the hip in, then pulling across, same deal, stretching down into the ground, the grounded leg, down to the back on the kicking leg. And as I do, hands, hands, okay? The side view. Okay, hands go to the side, clip, 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 clip. Good. Five more. E. R. San. Si. Good. Changing sides. Play with that draw in to reach out. Click, click. Left, right for all of you. Good. more on your own. And now five more together. E. R. San. Su. Wu. Good. Shaking up your arms for a moment. Okay, arms out. Watching me. I'm going to take my back leg. Bring it across. Tap, tap, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Changing leads. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Relax the arms at the side for a moment. Stepping in front, heel up. As I push the heel down, raising to the side. Step as the heel drops. Raising the leg. Let's go for 10. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, everyone, take a moment. Get a quick sip of water. Everyone okay so far? Sweet. Squat kicks are next. So start with a straight leg. Watch me first. Sink. And back down. Okay? Let's give that a go. And E. R. San. Si. Wu. Liu. Qi. Ba. Jiu, share. Good. Right foot forward, shoulder circles back. Changing sides. Little finger leading the way. Okay. 
square up again. This time, outside crescents from a squat. And E. R. San. Si. Wu. Liu. Qi. Ba. Jiu. Shi. Good. Drawing in. Slice, slice. Roll the weight forward to raise. One, two, three. One, two, three. Nice and slow for the first couple. Roll, slice, raise. Roll, slice, raise. Roll, slice, raise. One, two, three. One, two, three. So the hips for a moment here. Remember as I turn in, the hip rolls in. It's part of the external rotation. It carries the body out. That pull draws that back hip in to the slice. The external rotation of that front hip now carries you through to the throw. Once again, nice and slow, the hip turns in, pulling the torso. Hip arcs out, check. That pull draws in that back quad, cut. Externally rotating that front hip, throw. One more with me, then I'll watch all of you. Rolling in, check, pulling that back hip, slice, rolling the front hip, throw. Good. Try a couple on your own. Keeping space in the armpit. Good, Joanna. For the second, the first strike's looking great. The roll, the check is looking awesome. As you pull that hip forward, that arm raises fairly straight. See in that arc as the hip comes through? Cuts. That face towards you? Cuts. There you go. Little finger side towards me, thumb side away. And now from here, as I pull that weight forward, there's that throw. And everyone notice how the angle of my toes and the angle of my hand is the same. My body is round as I throw. I'm not throwing off to the left side here. I'm throwing within the confines of my own structure. So again, roll, check, slice, throw. So the same shape, hips and shoulder. I played that a couple of times. Yes, Karen? Okay, cool. Very nice, Karen. Little finger leads to the first two. Little finger side, check. Little finger side, slice. So I rotate 90 from there, thumb side to the third hit. So little finger front, little finger leads, thumb side leads. That's the idea, that's the idea, good. Can I see one more, Joanna? I'm oh, sorry. Good, Joanna. The second strike is looking a lot better. Watch me for a second. As you come through, the check is looking great. To see how things fold and round on that second hit. And you want to carry almost like a spear in your middle. So when you exhale that first hit, that spear can expand out and pop. If I collapse too far or go too straight in that arm, there's nothing I can round to open. I lose the integrity of that motion. So I make sure I'm hugging a circle and then carrying that circle forward. Here, there you go, good. That's the idea, very nice. Very good, yep. Because again, the punch is coming in. I interrupt the punch, I chop at the partner, I catch them under their armpit or their neck, and then toss them through. Very nice, very nice. Beautiful, Chris. Chris, slow down for a second. Make sure your hip roll is there carrying you, okay? 
That was gorgeous, Chris, just like that. Very nice, Craig. And Craig, for that third hit, make sure there's a cross body split. There you go. And that's gonna carry you bilateral through your hips, otherwise just kind of leaning into it. Good, all right, Caro, let's see. Good, Caro. Maintain that focus on that roundness of your chest and shoulders, okay? You're going a little straight for that last hit. You wanna maintain that very, very wide diameter circle, even that final part of your shoulder, of your hips. There you go, good. And that circle is gonna carry you back to the middle nine for your next strike. All right, so that clavicle miss kind of first point that guides you back around your own center. Good, Caro. Good, Karen. Okay, so watch me. You've got the, the coordinations down. The body shape seems a little bit more rounding. So as I roll in, you see how everything is drawn around a sphere. I stretch that sphere through, and now as I slice, you see how round the shape is? And now I just stretch that shape. It never goes straight. I'm always operating with that, I constantly have stretching oval. I think my Aikido bias is showing up that like in Aikido, we always have a straight spine that's like tall, like you never bend over. Yeah, yeah. And there, there are places for that. This is a different kind of mechanic than working around it. There you go. First move and third move are great. Second move was hesitant. And so feel the weight of that draw. More, so it's almost like there's a acceleration between each joint heading towards the hand as it slices down. Okay. It doesn't need to be fast in the end, it just needs that feeling of acceleration. Yes, that's it. So everyone shake it out for a second. So what I just showed Karen is a vital part of folly. Folly isn't going fast. Folly is going faster and faster. Does that distinction make sense? Fast means I start fast, constant pace to the hit and folly. There's an acceleration from joint to joint. So you can practice a folly movement quite slowly so long as each piece is gradually going a little bit more quickly. And that would present here. I have that nice slow roll in. This is a solid check. This isn't a folly. The second strike is though. So see how as I roll through, things sped up. I was never going fast. You ever see that? And here, things are gonna speed up but I'm never racing from bit to bit. As I do, it's just the combination of things loosening, breath filling my body, and running out of things getting in the way of my, shoulder, my structures as I roll through for that pop. And so you can get done quickly, right? Done slowly. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Hmm? The expression of energy was completely different. Right, right. And so you can practice folly movements very, very slowly if you don't feel like doing folly. Um, old Zhang, which is actually, his name actually translates, would always say that, you know, you can do folly everywhere, but it doesn't mean that you should. Um, especially when you're over 20, there are moments when you just don't want to be follying all over the place, and that's okay. He's 70 and still trains for hours every day. And he might do folly one out of three days, and his body feels like, you know, he's rested enough that today he can do that stuff again. So, so long as the mechanics and the timing are there, it's still an entirely adequate training. Okay, so we're gonna now add in a thumb bit of footwork. We're then gonna do our next step squat kicks. So we're gonna integrate the top and the bottom for the schwang, for the, the triple slice. Okay, so if we have one, two, three, step up, side, two, three, step back. So the patterning is one and in, back, side, and in, back, and in, back. And in. It's a very basic box step. One, two, one, two, one, two. And everyone seems to have that down pretty well. And so as we come through, right, we have our throw. As we draw back, check, slice, throw. Draw back, check, slice, throw. Draw back, check as the foot touches, slice, as the weight transfers, throw as we step up. Roll, check, slice, throw. Roll to carry us back, roll to check. The weight is still on the side. Drawing through, there's our slice. Rolling up, there's our throw. Good, one, 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A couple more with me. One, two, three, four. So you can really feel that hip draw as you go into that second slice. One, two, watch my hips, the hips pull. That begins that acceleration that carries through to the arm. So again, we're here. Watch me. The hips pull. The hips pull the arm. The arm's a little reluctant. And then as that quad turns, that begins the acceleration through. And so I'm waiting for the hips to turn for the arm to find angle. The arm is kind of floating, gently raising with the raise in the hip. The turn of the quad creates the turn of the slice. Try that again from that check. Pulling from the hip, the turning of the quad creates the turn of the shoulder. One last time, just this. Check. Turning of the hips, turning of the shoulder. Good. And then the pull through to raise. Follow me one last time. Check. Slice. Throw. And now try a couple on your own. Good. Making sure that you're always drawing your bellies to your back as you move. Good, Caro. Caro, really work on using that base to carry you across. Give that draw, check, cut, pop. Pull into the base. Step from the base. Change the side of the base. Roll the base forward. Draw into the base. Check. Change that base. And through. Okay. There you go, Carol. Very nice. That's the kind of intensity you want. Always pulling back to that base. Good, Craig. And use the support of your, your foundation here, Craig. As you roll in, right? Check. Cut. Pulling in. Strike. Draw, check, cut, pulling in, through. There you go. See how there's a pop as everything rolls through. There's a pop as the hips turn, right? That folly is always predicated not just on acceleration, but on that opening and closing of the quad. Whenever the quad opens and closes, you have the option to add in that pop. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I get kind of hooked on the, the traveling version of it, ca carrying forward, but doing it in the stationary uh, form gives you some training in the mechanics that you don't get when you're traveling. <laughs> it's easy to omit them. It's easy to forget the hips when you can just step, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when right. it's all kind of relying upon that twist in and out, it gives you that base. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. You're doing great, man. You're doing great. Good, Joanna. So the trajectory of that second hit. The first hit, I'll go side view so you can see the different angle. You see that same sort of line from my ankle to my hand. As I turn, the hand comes across, and it comes right to my center line. Okay? It doesn't go so far as to impact my knee, but it definitely curves in and maintains round at the armpit. So there's still space in my armpit. As I step through, I carry that structure, pop, and then there's that throw. Good. Done sideways again. Here's the roll to check. Carry it across. That hand draws in almost my knee, but not quite touching. A space in the armpit. Drawing up, rolling out, pop. Good. Try a couple more. Actually, everyone, um, just shake it off for a moment. We're going to try a little experiment together. We're just going to do four more of these, and we're going to change gears, okay? So watch me first. Here's what we're going to play with. We're going to try to bring in lower stance work as a means of better feeling the movement in our hips. If at any point you feel like your backs, hips, knees, or ankles need a break, please take a break. But watching these, we roll through. I want to be deep enough in the stance I can feel the stretch in my inguinal. As I turn, I'm low enough that I can feel that draw the other side. 
carrying that weight in, arcing out, pulling the weight through to pop. And done sideways, you can all get a different angle. So I step out, carrying across, drawing in, rolling out, pop. So we're really trying to carry into the base. Again, nice and slow. Don't worry about file leaves. We're working those transitions, okay? We're trying to do two each side. So if you step out, one. Turn the hips. Focus on that turning of the hips nice and slow. As that far hip turns in, the arm follows. Pulling that straight leg in and then continuing that arc as it steps out. Pulling the weight around that front leg. Pop. One. Turning in at the quad. Carrying the hip in. Check. Pulling through that base, slice. Pulling that back foot in, following that arc forward as we roll, two. Turning from the hip, drawing the hip in, check. Pulling through that base, slice. Drawing up and in, and then around and through, and now for the last one, turn, draw, continue that draw, check, slice, through, and grab some water. I think the lower stance does help make it more visible how your figure eights are moving through the pattern. Totally. And low stance is absolutely a faster um, trajectory to get where you want to go. The problem is it can also be injurious, right? Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure that you're always warm before you go to low stance and that you never do as many as you think you can do. Right? You always want to stop early and save a bit for tomorrow. <laughs> um, I mean, especially just, the first six months. Is, the grounding through that peach one was like just being in horse the entire time. Yeah. 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 And that's, again, if you want to really feel those mechanics of the hip, being in that lower stance and letting that muscle fatigue guide your movement is a lovely, lovely way to go. It will expedite the process a bit. Any questions that we just did? Okay, if we get a quick sip of water, we'll do some more knee circles after that, and the last couple set of kicks. You're all doing really well. That took a lot less time than I thought it would. Nice progress. <laughs> no, the, the, the triple slice, right? The, the sun P, that's, it's not an easy movement. And you were all able to take that new set of footwork, which is, again, also quite challenging. And then from there into that base work, that's rad. And so again, working at home, get the legs loose, get the shoulders loose, do a few sets nice and high, work into that low stance. Then after you're tired, just your own personal, your own training, then you can go back to that higher training and the legs will remember where to be based on work that's keeping them out earlier. And so it's kind of a great middle point if you want to pay, make, you know, San P a regular part of your workout. So P means slice? A uh, split, literally split. Split, okay, cool. Because I remember the, San is three. What's that? I remember San is three, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and P Chuan is splitting fist. Um, um, and at the beginning when you're learning Xing Yi, everything is P Chuan, it's just peeing all over the place. And of course, oh, no. my brother Fritz and I, you know, we're very mature when we were talking about that in Beijing. <laughs> all over the temple. All right. Feet together. So little things that keep you sane you're training eight hours a day. And circles. <laughs> Our old game was using creative obscenities to mess the other one up when we were doing forms to the teacher and change directions. It's, it's funny, Americans love to make cross-lingual jokes and um, Sp Spanish-speaking people do not understand. Typically, if you try to make a, a, like a homonym joke between like Spanish and English, right. they're just like, they try to explain how you're confused. Yeah. <laughs> back to the middle, back and forth. Same thing in Chinese. Instead of them, you know, kind of giggling, it's like, well, what this really means is this, this, and this, and how you should have used it is here. 
<laughs> right? How nice of them to correct your misunderstanding. <laughs> but I just wanted to be funny. That's I know, right? Play the joke. You killed it. It's, it's an thing. American way to play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to do our squat in the inside crescent. But before we do, let's take a few moments to play with that stalling crescent. So again, as I pull the foot, hold and back, hold and back. The brace leg can bend. I want that kicking leg pretty straight so I can feel that pull through my belly, the side, step to side, starting nice and low, playing with that twist in your hip from a side view so you can see. Feel a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a twist. Once that twist feels comfy, then you can increase the size of that kick. Good. Pushing the heel out, pulling the toes back, keeping the legs straight. Hi, Margo. Very nice. Let's do 10 of these with a squat. And E. Good morning. R. E. Sun. S. Wu. Liu. Qi. Ba. Jo. Sure. Good. Oh, real quick before I get Margo, I talked to my teachers. Um, I got the perspective of the two best Pao Chai masters in the world and one of the top Bagua masters in the world. And their feeling is that men and women should train exactly the same and that you should make all, all allowances in the hip shapes based upon your own body measurements. Okay. And so when a thing says two fists, it might be two fists for men, but it really means the comfortable space between the sits bones, right? Right. Just make sure the shapes fit for your type and should work out just fine. That is, is their advice. That is very progressive of them because it acknowledges that some, that the, cro the crossover of bodies between men and women overlap like more than they're different. Right. <laughs> and they were actually kind of insulted when I first asked them because like, but we're all people. We're all training Kung Fu. Like the idea is to be more person. So women are people. What the hell's wrong with you, Joey? It's like, I know this. <laughs> it's not why I'm like, Okay, I, I hate I hate women, that, but it's okay. Right, I'm right, a person exactly. too. <laughs> but perhaps like, I didn't hate everyone who wasn't my gender. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thanks so much for asking. Of course, yeah, happy to. No, I'm, was, I'm sorry I, I apparently destroyed your cred with them. <laughs> oh, believe me, I have messed up my cred far worse than that on the regular. It's fine. <laughs> and we recovered it by the end. But let's say it some really nice conversations that ended in virtual hugs. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> so are you saying you're not a sexist anymore? <laughs> The good old days. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me with the wife who could easily end me at Capoeira. <laughs> <laughs> so the foot up, drawing the knee cross body, angling the heel out just a little, pivoting the brace leg, push to the side, draw back, pivot back to standing. So my leg is square. My hip is square, rather. My raised leg is toes up, also vertical. I bring that knee a little cross body, point the heel where I want to go, turn the heel of my base leg, and then push. Press through the hip, feel that hip stretch, straight kicking leg. And then as you draw up first, from the draw to the pivot, from the pivot to that square stance. Try two more on this leg. Leg turns, base pivots, pressing from the middle, drawing back, and turn. Good. And I'm going to turn sideways. Let me all try this. Kick it toward the screen so you're going to see your foot stretch. The foot turns, the hip turns, press, stretch that hip, draw, and then pivot. Good. Ever try two more of those? I'll change legs. Good. Other side. Leg raises. Knee turns in. Foot turns out just a little. Pivot on the base leg to press. I'll turn to all of you. Press. Draw. Back to vertical. 
Good. Knee turns in, foot turns out. Turn the heel toward the target. Reach. Drawing the leg. And turn that base leg. Good. Find that center. Turn the leg. Pivot the base. Reach. Draw. And pivot that base. Good. Two more towards me. Very nice, everyone. Give that a shake. Good. Now, one last kick we're going to play with is the round kick. So that's our side kick. That's a pushing kick. And the round kick is like you're hitting somebody with a bat. A little bit different. So one has a push in. The other kicks out the side. The round kick, in fact, at the end of every class, our wall. Okay? The work with here is the setup to save our knees. We're not actually going to kick them today. Just play with the base. All right? So starting with that back leg, raise the knee. Point the toe as you pivot and point your knee at your target. And back and down. So watch me. One, two, three, four. Let's try that together. One, two, three, four. Good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, two more on this side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Changing legs, same thing, nice and slow for the first couple. One, point the toes as you turn your back foot. Two, drawing everything back to stable. Three, foot back, four. One, two, three, 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 four, and last one. One, two, three. Very nice. The most common injury when you're learning how to do a roundhouse is twisting out the knee of your base leg. If people like to point the toe where they're kicking, and they twist right to the hip, and ouch goes the knee. And so it's important as you learn this kick to kick to drill in that whenever you raise that leg up, you're pivoting to support that joint. Right? So you can see if I kick from here, I don't have much range. Everything lands right in that knee. If I kick from here, I get much more extension. I have that base. I pull everything back in, and then there's my foundation. Make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to kick high. We're going to do four kicks to, on each leg, kicking low. So your target area is your own thigh. Okay, so watching me, still that same lift, pivot, kick, and back, pivot, kick, and back. And once that feels comfortable, then I can add in that pull through the hip, which makes everything roll straight through and gives the kick a lot more power. But for today, we're just gonna block that out, okay? So, leg back, raise the leg, point the knee at that low target as you pivot on your heel, reach past your own thigh, draw back, turn, and in for one. Good. Raise the leg so you can kick at any of the main targets, head, torso, or body. As you pivot, choose the low target, reach past your target, draw, pivot, and back. Two more. Raise the leg, all the targets are possibilities. Pick the low target, reach, draw, and back. One last time. Frame up. Pivot and aim, extend, and back, and changing legs. Same thing. Leg comes up. Yeah, Karen. 
Oh, I just wanted to say, like, when I started watching where exactly your hands are, it really improved my stability. Like, even though your hands aren't moving, your hands aren't actually moving much, but, like, there's a very slight adjustment that really kept me more stable. In case I don't see this. I don't see you doing that. I see you, like, moving your hands, like, an inch. Right. And as I move those hands an inch, I'm pulling the shoulder back as the kicking leg goes forward. That's not actually, that's not literally what I'm seeing you doing, but I understand that's the concept. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So let's have the hands one second. Let's do a few more kicks, so we're going to back, back to the hands. <laughs> Pivot, kick, vertical, and back. Lift, pivot, kick, vertical, and back. And last one. Give it a go. Very nice, very nice. And so we're going to carry the in one second. But from here, right, I can pick any target, right? My leg is raised. What's going to dictate where I kick is where that knee's pointed. The knee points low, kick low. Knee points middle, kick middle. Knee points high, kick high, right? And so from that start, I can select any target along that line that I want to go to, okay? And to Karen's point of the hands, much like when we're doing are rolling the press. See how on my base side, the hip and the shoulder cross each other in opposite directions, and then carry through, cross and through. Exact same thing here. As I'm turning the base in, the arms are gonna go out. So there's this opposite twist on that balancing post that I'm creating. That twist grounds me. If I only lean one direction, I'm gonna fall that way as I go. If I twist, I can use that twist to maintain my balance, kick after kick after kick. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. And Karen, you're probably seeing that little adjustment in the hand that's indicative of that twist that's happening deeper in, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to try it with the hands real quick? That sound good? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, let's give that a go. So again, we're going to select a low to middle target. If you feel very comfortable with your flexibility, you can aim for the lower border of the ribs. If you're all cautious about your knees, Aim from mid to upper thigh, okay? There's always time to kick higher, right? And so watching me, what we're going to do, the same basic stuff, I'll demonstrate, and then we'll all do it together, of our one, two. And then now from here, I'm going to reach the arms opposite my foot, and five times, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's do it together. So set, raise, turn. Pick your target, arms to one side, foot to the other, kicking through your target. One, two, three, four, five, back to center, and step back and change legs. Same thing on the other side. Leg raises, select your target, hands on the opposite side of the foot, and as the body crosses, one, two, three, four, five. Notice how my leg is parallel with the ground. I want to swing it straight through like I'm chopping straight. And if I kick too far up, the force is going to deflect up to and down. The force is going to refract down. I want that nice straight across kick. So I get as much of that force transfer as I can manage. Three more on this side. One, two, three. Go do one more set of these. Thing we do today is a little bit of our inver inversion from last class. So linking the hands, rolling the wrists, other direction, good, stretching down just a little, pivot, drop the elbows down just a little. As the hands reach up, grabbing one wrist, thumb side forward, squeeze as you rotate the wrist, creating space those carpals to reset. Change the grip, squeeze, allow those carpals to find their most happy spot. Changing hands, roll.
changing hand positions, roll. Classic self tween off for allowing the wrist to just pop right back into place. Good. So Craig, I know you have um, some difficulty with inversion. Um, so do a little bit of work there, circle walking when we do this, okay? Awesome. And for everyone else, watching me first, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna do a basic hold, then we're gonna go into a cartwheel just a little bit. So from here, both my hands are on the ground, and we raise one foot and then the other. So that raising leg carry the other foot up. So see how I'm lifting, and that lift just hops to the ground, hops to the ground. All right? Let's try 10 of those. And one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Give the arms a little break. Go to the other side. Pushing into the ground, using the raise of that heel <clears throat> to carry your body up, and then gently set it back down. If you're hearing a hard thud, you're kicking too hard to get a nice soft raise, nice soft drop. Use that raise up. And one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Shaking that out for a moment. Can any of you not do a cartwheel yet? I don't think I have the room for a cartwheel. In there. Fair enough. They won't do that part with it. So, Same. Uh, I haven't ever attempted a cartwheel indoors. Fair enough. So we'll hold up the cartwheel part for today. We'll do that as our setup for cartwheels. Um, but just so all of you know, when you're working on a cartwheel, and you have a confined space, raise that first foot, arc it, and then step through. Raise, arc, and step through. And that can build the coordination to round off the cartwheel. So even in a confined space, you can still play with the movement. Okay. All right. I think I might have enough room. I'm just not sure. Yeah, yeah. Like it, we'll, we'll do a couple more warm-up classes before we get into the full cartwheel then. All right. Let's do one last thing, inversion. Watching me. Back from that squat. One hand to the side, one hand between my knees, like the side view. It's here. Okay. As I turn, I rest my body on this elbow. So everyone just take a second and bop their elbow to their side just a couple times. Good. As I turn sideways, watch. I'm dropping the knee on the side of the outreached arm. And my next move, stabilizing with my other hand, is to place my body on that elbow. OK? And I can use this hand here to stabilize that sink. As I turn up face all of you, I reach. My knee drops. My hand on the side stabilizes and I bring my body onto that elbow. Everyone give that a try. Nice, Joanna. Good, Margo. Good, Chris. Very good, Karen. That's, the, that's, that's great, Karen. Very nice. Good, Joanna. So, Joanna, from there, tuck your legs in a little more, okay? Good, now for everyone else. That's great, Joanna. As we go to that side, I place the body on that arm, other hands in the middle, I take that raised knee, the top knee, stack it on my elbow. From here, I can take that bottom leg and hop it up and set it back down when I need it. And if I need more balance, I can gently touch my head to the ground, and that makes it even easier to raise and drop that bottom leg. Good, Margo. Stack your left leg on your left, on your left elbow, your left knee on your left elbow. There you go. Good. Good, Karen. Very nice, Chris. One more time going this side, and I'll face away so you can all see what the bottom leg is doing. As I turn, I bring my body onto that arm, raise that top leg, bring the bottom one up, set it back down. Bring it up, set it back down. Give that a try. Good. Okay, now everyone who's on the ground, shake it out for a second. Joanna, watch me for a moment. As this is pretty basic for you, and also Chris, we do well at this, 
we can now work on is both legs up to one leg drop. Both legs up to one leg drop, okay? That's the next phase. We go to the other side, everyone else, just work on the basic with me, all right? So again, we're going to the other side now. Hand comes to the ground. That leg can go to the ground too, but I don't want too far of a space. As I lean in, the other hand stabilizes, helps me to get my body over that elbow. That far knee comes up and rests on my elbow. My head can also touch the ground. And I take that bottom leg and I lift and place down. Lift and place down. One last time. Lift and place down. Good. Do one more time on that side. To space and try once more when you're ready. Nice, Joanna. Nice recovery. Good. And now watching me. So once you get really comfortable at the basic kidney stand, the cage of hinge, the raising of the legs, the dropping of the legs, then you can start working on stuff like going from one side into the other side, back and forth. There's all kinds of fun hand balance that you can get into after that basic becomes a friend. So we're gonna just do a little bit of this every class and build that up. The last stretch we're gonna do before we call it is a wonderful little wrist stretch on your knees, with your hands on the ground, fingertips facing towards me. Any questions? Uh, the intention of like the straight kick and the roundhouse kick mechanics are pretty, pretty much similar to Sulak. Yep, good kicking is good kicking. Doesn't matter where it comes from. There's a right way to save the knees and a way to explode your knees. And if you focus on knee preservation, you're gonna kick pretty much the same way. And again, the main ways you can blow up your knees doing martial arts is by snapping the knee. That's always a no-no because, <laughs> Um, and also not pivoting a foot when you're doing a turn kick. That's why for the first you know, few weeks we did this, I had everyone focus so much on that pivot into that front leg, that feeling of rolling through the hip into a smooth extension. Because if that part's smooth, you're not going to be jolting your knee dramatically as you go into your round. You're just being side kick, right? You don't teach that pivot, people will kick from here. Their toes point towards you know, 90 degrees. And all that tweak comes into the knee. If you focus on the angle of that heel, and that draw through the base, the right. entire kick feels natural and smooth. There's no break in momentum. And it's not sticking into any of your joints as you do it over and over again, which is why we did so very much that in the beginning. We will go back to that. I just want to play with different ways of working out kicks today. All right. Awesome. Um, are you all enjoying kicking? Is that a fun thing to play with? Yeah, sure. it's awesome. <laughs> not your favorite, Margo? <laughs> <laughs> 